Okay, so in this video, we are going to look at electrolysis. And if I look at that word electrolysis, I can break it up. The electro stands for electricity and the lysis part means split. So you're going to use electricity to split something up. That is what electrolysis is, the use of electricity to split something up. What exactly are you going to split up? You are going to split up an ionic compound. If you are splitting up an ionic compound, you are going to get a metal and a non-metal because ionic compounds are made of metals and non-metals. So electrolysis, you're using electricity to split up an ionic compound and you're going to get a metal and a non-metal. Okay, so an example of an ionic compound would be sodium chloride. You would use electricity to split it up and you would get a metal, sodium and a non-metal chlorine. In order to do this experiment, your ionic compound must be able to conduct electricity. And if you want an ionic compound to conduct electricity, then that ionic compound must be either molten or aqueous. Another word for molten is just liquid. So you can also use the state symbol L, the lowercase l. Another word for aqueous is in solution. And you can also use the state symbol a Q. If something is molten or liquid, that means you have melted it. So you had a solid, you melted it, and now it's a liquid. I can describe that liquid as being molten. If something is aqueous or in solution, then you have dissolved it in water. So if I had a solid and I wanted to make it aqueous, I would dissolve it in water. And the reason you must have your ionic compounds as either molten or aqueous is because they must be able to conduct electricity. All ionic compounds contain ions, which are charged particles, but those charged particles have to be free to move. Okay, the ions must be free to move. And if you remember from CC1, those particle diagrams, Particles in a solid are not free to move. Particles in a solid can only vibrate. So if you've got an ionic compound and it's solid, it will not conduct electricity and this experiment will not work. So you'll take your ionic compound and you will turn it into a liquid. When you turn it into a liquid, the ions are able to move, which means it can conduct electricity. To turn it into a liquid, you will either melt it or you will dissolve it in water. Once you have either melted it or dissolved it in water, you can carry out electrolysis. Now I've drawn a diagram to show you what that apparatus would look like. I am going to do the electrolysis of molten potassium bromide. Remember, molten just means that I've melted solid potassium bromide to turn potassium bromide into a liquid. I'm going to do the same electrolysis but with aqueous potassium bromide. So instead of melting potassium bromide, I'm going to dissolve it in water. Either way, I've got it in liquid form, which is necessary to conduct electricity because those ions must be able to move. If I look at potassium bromide, okay, I will see that it contains potassium and it contains bromine. Because it's an ionic compound, potassium and bromine are present as ions. To find out what charge a potassium ion has, I look at my periodic table and I see that because potassium is in group one, it's got a charge of plus one. Bromine is in group seven, therefore bromine has a charge of minus one. So they are the two ions that I have got in potassium bromide. What I've got here in my little apparatus is I have got a battery. Remember, we're using electricity to split up our ionic compound, so we need some sort of source of power. And that source is going to come from my battery. All batteries have a positive end and a negative end. And I connect the positive end of my battery to an electrode, and I connect the negative end of my battery to an electrode. The positive electrode is called the anode. 
the negative electrode is called the cathode. And you need to know that, okay? A simple way of remembering it is panic. Positive is the anode. Negative is cathode, okay? So my positive side is called the anode. My negative side is called the cathode, okay? And when I turn my battery on, my entire anode becomes positively charged and my cathode becomes negatively charged. I place these electrodes, okay, into my beaker that contains my potassium bromide, okay? Remember, potassium bromide contains ions, positive potassium ions, negative bromine ions. And what will happen, because opposites attract, all of your positive sodium ions go to the negative cathode and all of your negative bromide ions go to the positive anode, okay? So opposite charges attract. The positive potassiums go to the negative cathode, the negative bromide ions go to the positive anode. And in doing so, you have split up potassium bromide. You've got potassium on one side, you've got bromine on the other side. You just use electricity to split it up, all right? The same thing is gonna happen over here, all right? So again, my positive side is my anode, and my negative side is my cathode. I've got potassium bromide. Potassium bromide, again, contains K plus ions and contains B or minus ions. But this time it's aqueous, it's not molten. And aqueous means you've dissolved it in water. Water itself contains ions. It contains the ions H plus and OH minus. So instead of just having two ions in your, uh, in your um, compound, you have now got four. You've got two positive ions, you've got two negative ions. When you turn on your battery, the same thing is gonna happen. The positive ions are attracted to the negative cathode. So K plus is still going to go to the negative cathode. But hydrogen is also going to go to the negative cathode, okay? Both sets of positive ions go to the negative cathode. Both sets of negative ions, so bromine and OH minus, they will all go to the positive anode. Okay, so opposite charges always attract. All of my positive ions go to the negative cathode. All of my negative ions go to the positive ion, positive anode. And once again, I've split up my ionic compound through the use of electricity. This is an example of electrolysis. Okay, what I want you to do now is I want you to try and answer these five questions. So why does solid potassium chloride not conduct electricity? What is the positive electrode called? What is the negative electrode called? And which electrode, so cathode or anode, will Na plus be attracted to? And which electrode will Cl minus be attracted to? Press pause, answer those five questions and press play when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so I filled in my answers. The first question I've asked you, why does solid potassium chloride not conduct electricity? The reason is that as a solid, remember your particles can only vibrate, which means your ions are not free to move. And I have to specify that the ions are not free to move. If I wanted it to conduct electricity, I could either melt it, make it molten, or I could dissolve it in water to make it aqueous. The positive electrode is called the anode, the negative electrode is called the cathode. You need to know that. Positive anode, negative is cathode. Remember panic. Which electrode will Na plus be attracted to? Na has a positive charge. I know it's going to be attracted to the negative electrode because opposites attract. The negative electrode is called the cathode. So the positive sodium will go to the negative cathode. Cl minus is going to be attracted to the positive electrode. I know that the positive electrode is called the anode. So the negative chloride ion will be attracted to the positive anode, okay? There are a few other electrolysis questions in your core info guide that you can practice, but in general, what is on this page is the really important things that you need to know.